My name is Erin Bradley. I'm a teacher at Brian Evan Primary School, which is in Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm giving a lesson here using to animate a purple mash tool to try to explore the creativity in 10 and 11 year old children. I hope that you will enjoy the lesson. It's somewhat interesting. Right at the end of the lesson, we'll give a whole presentation of some of the work that they have done. I hope you enjoy. Today we work with animation, so we're going to use the to animate tool and we're going to make our pictures move as if they are alive and that's called animation. Animation is photographing pictures to make them seem alive. So watch very carefully as we go through animating to tell a story. But we're going to just do a trace, that means we're going to take a picture and we're going to use that picture as a guide for our drawing. So we're going to get started with animation. And animations are made up of film strips, but in to animate, we're going to use different slides. So we're going to have every slide or frame, it could be a, a slide or frame, makes up the animation. They run one picture after another in a slide, and that gives us the animation. So I'm just looking around, and you can see I'm launching the to animate, and there you see I've already got a pre-made picture already. It's something that I did with the other class on elephants. We don't want to use this one, so I'm going to take it away and we're going to start a whole new animation. So let's go to the first frame and that's where we're going to draw our picture in this area over here, the white area or the stage area. We can call that a frame or a slide. You'd find that in PowerPoint as well. It'll be called a slide. You can see the sequence of slides right at the top, each of those white blocks showing all the pictures that will make up our animation. At the moment, we've got four slides that are shown, or four frames. Now, I'm going to look for a picture, and I'm going to choose YouTube, because I want to find a picture that I can bring and use as a trace. As we move through the frames, or those slides, in those four blocks, we're going to go from one to the other, and because the second picture will be different to the first, it'll mean that there's some sort of movement. You'll see it'll start animating. It'll give a lifelike expression to whatever we've drawn. And we're going to use a monkey picture. I'm going to bring in a monkey, and you'll see we'll try and get the eyes to move a little to show you an aspect of animation. I would like you to try and get further than what I'm going to show you. You've got to practice, you've got to develop it so that your pictures that you bring into your slides or your frames are going to show movement of legs, movement of arms. You could even have that you bring in distance, that the object's coming closer by getting bigger. And if it's moving further apart, it's going to get smaller in the next slide. So you have to practice. You've got a lot of work to do. To be good at this, you're going to need to practice a lot using the animation tool in Purple Mash. How wonderful it is that we've got this tool and it's available for us to use. Wonderful. Let's look for a wonderful picture of a monkey. We take the possibility that your teacher may have asked you to do a project on monkeys or animals. And we are now looking at mammals and we're going to look for a monkey, which is a primate. And we're going to find this cute monkey in YouTube. Now, obviously you don't have YouTube on your computers, but I'm just giving you a demonstration. So I'm going to look for this monkey picture. And look at that, that's a beautiful picture of a very cute monkey. So I'm opening it up, and look, there's a monkey eating a watermelon. I need to find a picture that's going to be a little closer. So I don't think this is going to be the appropriate picture, but I'm just playing a bit through the video just to see if we can find one. My example is going to move around with eyes, eyes moving from left to right. So I need to really get a picture of a monkey up close so that I can show you how to do animation in a very simple way. Ah, there we go. That's perfect. We've got a beautiful picture here of, look at that, of a monkey. What a cute monkey it is. We're going to use this one. That would be just perfect. We can feed that into our animation. It'll really make it great. Look at this wonderful picture. We'll definitely use that one. So let's see how it goes. Let me just show you how to get the snipping tool. So you click on the start, Windows start button, or you can just press the Windows keyboard, go SN and click on snipping tool. There it is over there. So you click on the snipping tool 
and it's going to activate it. So I've clicked on it, and there's another picture that I saved earlier on. So you go and press the new button, and look, I'm dragging over this picture of the monkey. And look, now I need to just save it. So I'm going to press on that button to save it, and that'll save. Now we're going to save this picture. So I'm going to call it monkey cute, because it's a very cute monkey, and I'm going to call it underscore zero one because we're going to use possibly 10 frames and that would mean each one of them would be known by the number so I'm going to call it zero one at the end so that's how we're going to do it so you can see I got that with the, the snipping tool now I need to show you how to get that monkey picture into the first frame so let's show you're going to go on this button over here and then remember it's that button it's very important to know choose file and you can see I'm getting it from my PC my personal computer so I click on from my PC and look it's opened up this folder which is showing all the pictures and there's my cute monkey picture cute monkey cute zero one and you can then scroll up or down to set the picture how you would like it sometimes you're going to need to zoom in but here I've, sa I've saved it and you can see it's giving me either to put it in all frames but I only want it, I'm going to just put it in all the frames so here we've got our monkey picture you've got that white spot on top and at the bottom so I'm going to click on the pencil tool and change the color to black now it's very important that you fill all the spaces because when I color in afterwards as you will get to see you need to make sure that all of the black lines, your line work, must close. If you have an open space, it won't color properly, which is very likely to happen. Now, I'm making all the fur. This is the shape of the head of the monkey. And just go around like that. I'm going over the white spots because I want to show that that is also part of it. And I'm just trying to fill the lines. Please excuse if you find that excuse me if you find that I don't draw too well but there we go we're just outlining aspects of the monkey's cute face isn't it cute and here I've got the hair like all going out like that and it's almost cat like that you see the whiskers almost over there so you're drawing all of that you fill in all this space and it's really important that you do give some of the lines that you close them everywhere you want to color in so that you don't mess up when you use the paint bucket tool because the paint buckets tool is what I'm there's the mouth so I'm just filling it in very very quickly because I want to show you and I want to get you guys all working as well well that seems enough with the freehand pencil tool and now I'm going to start using this circular tool I'm going to draw the eyes and I want to give it a comical effect so I'm going to just look for the full circle I'm going I don't know what you call those but I'm now going to put a little bit of glint on the eyes to give it that interesting comical effect. And there you've got those glints of the eyes. And now it comes to taking the picture away. You click on that button, on the background button, and you're going to then make changes. But you can see there's some open spaces. So I just want to close those. When you color in afterwards, as I said earlier on, if there's open spaces, any little gap, you won't be able to color it in perfectly. So we click on this button. And that's going to take us to a cross, this red cross. And we get that. once you click on that, it's taken it away. Now let's see if we can use the paint bucket tool. And we'll go with this light brownish color. And already you can see there's a gap. You can see there's a gap here. And that's caused part of it to not be colored in. I'm going to put that one as brown. And just add in other details. Let's go and put that. Oh, that doesn't look that good. So uh, let's go with the green. So he's like lying on the grass. And then we'll go with the background there of the sky. And, well, that's probably good enough for the moment. I want you to do a, a far better job when you do yours. Now I wanted to show you, bring in another slide. So if you click on that button, you'll see I've got another slide. Drag, I want to make two of them. And remember, I did say I'm going to show you how to change the movement of the eyes. We're going to make the eyes move. So I'm using the eraser. I'm taking out those little black parts of the eye. And now I'm going to use this full circle tool but I need to put it in black and I'm going to move oh, oops I've just pressed the wrong button and that's the undo button just make sure you know that one 
click on the full circle. I'm not quite getting it right there. You can see it's going a little bit over. Oh, goodness me. Undo. And let's just see if we can get that one right. And now we need to bring in that little glint of sunlight, that little white spot on the eyes, which makes it look a lot more scintillating. And here you can see now, if I click on the two, look how it's got the eyes almost animating, in a, not in a very good way. I needed to take a lot more trouble to get this better. But I think you've got the idea. So remember, we, we use the button and that cross to get the picture away, and now we have a trace. Okay. If we go choose file, that's how we're going to go from my PC. So I'm looking for a picture. If I decided I want to bring in a different picture, I could scroll through, look and see what I find, and bring it into our presentation, into the various frames. Okay, I think you've all got the hang of how this is done. I look forward to seeing what you're going to come up with, and I do hope that I can record some of your wonderful animations to show them on YouTube. We always want to show your beautiful work to show how creative you all are. And remember that if you download this, you should be able to get it as a GIF file, which means it can be read in any HTML document. And that is a web document, hypertext markup language is a web document. So go for it. Try to build some interesting animation here. It really is wonderful. And try to do it by tracing as I have shown you. Now I'm going to provide a whole range of different animations that you guys have done. I'm going to show it and I'm going to put some artificial intelligence music that was done with Aiva. And if you want to try that, you just got to go to the website and you can see that a machine can produce music. Try it out. You'll find it really very exciting. Thanks guys. And now for a sample of work, a whole lot of the learners work using artificial intelligence as a background from Aiva. You can go to the website that I'm showing you here and try your own. Try to construct some sort of composition. I hope that you're going to enjoy it. It's basically the outcome of all the lessons in the animation and I think that some of the learners have come up with interesting stuff.